everyone knows that Muslims and Jews are religiously forbidden to eat pork. The explanations for this prohibition are virtually the same for both peoples. There are several versions, and beliefs, of why Jews do not eat pork. One of the legends of our ancestors, who lived on earth thousands of years ago, says that once the priests of Egypt in their carnal pleasures did not notice how they contracted leprosy. To stop the spread of the disease, Pharaoh decided to build a leprosarium on the outskirts of the country, where he forcibly evicted all the sick. Their chief physician was the priest Moses, who immediately established order in the leprosarium, writing a set of laws and rules that the sick had to observe to stop the infection. One of the main rules was the prohibition of pork because it caused a natural tendency to skin diseases. Later, the rest of the Jews began to observe this prohibition as a tribute to Moses. According to another version, the Highest himself forbade the Jews to consume this product. Everything said in the Torah should not be discussed, and the commandments marked, HOK, should not be interpreted in scientific terms. If the Highest commanded not to touch pork, then it must be so. A set of strict dietary restrictions called kashrut or kosher, based on the laws of the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, and the Talmud, permits one to eat meat only from those animals that are part human and ruminant, from sheep to giraffes. Pork in this case is considered non-kosher meat. The ancient Jewish sages taught their people to view eating not only as replenishing physical energy but also as a spiritual process of transforming the gifts of nature into a piece of humanity. The Torah also teaches us to wash our hands before eating. Perhaps this is why the Jews are one of the few nations spared from mass epidemics since in ancient times other nations ignored this rule. Judaism also prescribes that food and the utensils in which it is prepared must be perfectly clean. There is even a holiday in Judaism called Hanukkah. It is associated with the prohibition of eating pork and is based on the story of the seven martyrs of the Maccabees. The brothers refused to break the law of their faith and eat pork. King Antiochus IV Epiphanes of Syria imprisoned the brothers and their mother and forced them to eat pork meat. They refused, so the governor ordered them killed one by one. According to another version, the prohibition arose because the pig was considered a filthy animal. But at the dawn of religion, all other livestock was not much cleaner. And the people themselves lived in unsanitary conditions. Why then were other nations tolerant of pigs? This question interests many scholars, who argue that any religious food prohibition can be explained in terms of common sense since it is a real precautionary measure for humans. According to this version, the prohibition of pork is related to the fact that the Jewish and Muslim religions originated in hot countries that were not suitable for keeping these animals. As early as the 9th century BC the pig was mentioned in the Torah as an unclean animal and was so repugnant to the Jews that instead of saying, pig, they said, devar ar, which meant, another thing, that is, it was better not even to call it by its name. The unacceptable attitude of Jews and Muslims toward pigs is explained by the impurity of this animal, whose meat is considered perishable and dirty. Pigs are known to be omnivores, they devour all kinds of filth, and their bodies can accumulate toxins that are dangerous to the human body. In hot climates, their meat quickly accumulates cadaveric poison. At the same time, Pork fat is a potent source of cholesterol, which causes heart attacks. And heart attacks are one of the most common causes of death in men between the ages of 40 and 60. The sages of the time concluded that it was much easier and more effective to indoctrinate one's fellow men that a pig was almost the spawn of hell than to explain that meat could be dangerous to one's health. Faith is always stronger than reason. Today this version does not quite fit the facts. If the reason was the hot climate, similar laws would exist in all countries with hot climates, and pig farming would be very rare there. In fact, in Africa, in India, in hot southern China. Everywhere, the pig is a domestic animal and its meat is an integral part of the diet. The most plausible possibility is the need to stand out among the Greeks and Romans, who had great respect for pork. After all, the Jews had lived alongside these peoples for centuries. There are also reports that the boar was once a sacred animal among the ancient Semites, and since then, even after the change of religion, 
it has remained an untouchable animal for them. As for why the Jews do not eat pork, there is another explanation, which has to do mainly not with divine laws, but with worldly rules. The Christian author Origen with his hypothesis tried to explain why this prohibition arose. In Canaan, the natives worshipped Astartes, Baal, and so forth. When the Jews found themselves in Canaan, there was a danger of mixing families and dissolving blood. To prevent this from happening, artificial boundaries had to be created. For example, if you ate meat, you could eat everything, rams, mutton, pork. And the Jews could not. And with this incompatibility, there were very few prerequisites for the fusion of peoples. In ancient times, when all the people gathered for holidays in one place where there were common dishes and recipes, Jews could not have common recipes with non-Jews. It was problematic for a Jew to sit at the table with a non-Jew. This was done so that there would be no assimilation. In general, the role of the pig depended most of all on the main condition. The pig could be a domestic animal only in sedentary populations. In a nomadic way of life, the breeding of pigs was impossible. And if the nomad was not dependent on the land, the pig was more dependent on the sedentary nature of the master than any other domestic animal. When nomads encountered sedentary populations, they either formed a dominant stratum, like the Arabs in North Africa or died after a heroic struggle. It can be assumed that the prohibition of the use of pork arose at a time when nomadic Semitic peoples encountered Indo-European settled tribes, the Hittites, the first Indo-Europeans in Asia Minor. The Hittites raised pigs. Perhaps it was during this period that the image of the enemy was reflected in the references to the use of pork. But Christians are allowed to eat pork. Christianity is one of the major monotheistic religions, originating as early as 33 AD in Palestine. In Russia, where paganism prevailed at the time, Christianity was adopted in 988. On Russian soil in the days of paganism, cattle breeding flourished. People raised cattle and pork was a favorite delicacy for the people. They were also very fond of drinking wine. So if a change of religion, for example, to the Muslim religion, had to impose food restrictions, people would probably just change power. Therefore, it was decided to choose a faith in which there were no restrictions on alcohol and food. There is no place in the gospel where man is forbidden to eat any food. The Lord was at the feast at Cana of Galilee and never once mentioned the prohibition of food. Rather, he turned water into wine, thereby blessing the feast. The Lord recommended learning abstinence so that people would not abuse the food to their advantage, abstain from idols and blood, and not do to others what we do not want to do to ourselves. The food itself can be anything. There is nothing from outside the man entering into him which can defile him, but the things proceeding out of the man are the things defiling the man. Mark chapter 7 verse 15. This is why you can eat pork in the Christian faith, but not in Islam and Judaism.